is sitting on Mars, and it's something only the United States could do. At about 1.30 Eastern time this morning, NASA landed the largest and most sophisticated machine on another planet. After its eight-month, 352-million-mile journey to Mars, the rover Curiosity was bang on target, and a reaction among NASA engineers? Listen to this. You, Jeff, is good. Touchdown confirmed. We're safe on Mars. <laughs> If anybody has been harboring doubts about the status of U.S. leadership in space, well, there's a one-ton automobile-sized piece of American ingenuity, and it's sitting on the surface of Mars right now, and it should certainly put any such doubts to rest. Well, I love that. Okay, the car-sized rover is already sending back pictures like this. And a lot more are expected as this mission is just beginning. Joining us now, well-known theoret theoretical physicist Professor Michio Kako uh, from the City University of New York. And I'm sure I just totally mauled your name. He is the author of the new best-selling book, Physics of the Future, How Science Will Shape Human Destiny and Our Lives by the Year 2100. Welcome to the show. It's great to have you here, Professor. Glad to be on. You know, you said to me in the break, you said, this was not a given that they could pull this off. That's right. NASA went for the gold, and they struck a 10. <laughs> Think about it. The execution, the dismount, the landing, it was not a given at all. No dress rehearsal, and they scored a bullseye. And this wasn't like a little lightweight craft like the last time we did this. This was weighed more than a ton, right? This is the Godzilla of space probes. It <laughs> has 10 times the instrumentation of any previous Mars rover, which are about the size of a bicycle. This is the size of a pickup truck. And it weighs five times more than any other Mars probe. And so getting it down was like a slingshot or something, right? How did they do it as a practical It's like bungee jumping. Okay. They, had the, they had the probe come in and they dangled it, literally dangled it as the probe came down. It's never been tried before because the atmosphere is so thin, a large airplane cannot fly in the atmosphere of Mars. And because of the fact that it's so heavy, 2,000 pounds. All right, I want to talk about the cost of this because a lot of people are concerned. Uh, if you look at how much they've spent on this, some $18.4 billion, the cost of one shuttle launch, $1.2 billion, the cost of Curiosity, $2.5 billion. Why does it cost so much more to put a, an unmanned uh, vehicle on Mars? Well, this is peanuts. This is pocket change compared to the manned space program because that requires life support and requires so many redundant systems. Robots don't complain. They don't have to come back and they don't go on strike. And as a consequence, robotic missions in general are cheaper. But this was a huge mission. Like I said, 10 times the instrumentation of any previous mission on another planet. Talk to me about why it's important for the U.S. to, to make these kinds of missions. Look at what spin-offs we have. First of all, we have GPS, weather satellites, the internet, telecommunications, this TV program. You realize that a huge chunk of our economy and our standard of living is weighted to outer space, not to mention the microchip. The microchip itself, which fuels a trillion dollar economy, is a byproduct of the miniaturization process that went on in this space program. But isn't there, a, isn't there an additional benefit that doesn't have anything to do with money? And, and I think it's, a, it's what it gives the American people, which is a sense that we're doing more than just watching TV and sitting on our sofa. We're out there, we're exploring. That's right. I'll never forget the fact that LBJ was criticized for the cost of the space program. But when the weather satellite went up for the first time, it photographed a hurricane headed toward Texas. And he was able to give warning for the first time in human history. It's never been done before. And that very same night, LBJ came on television and said, tonight, the space program has paid for itself. <laughs> There you go. Okay, we have a question for our viewers tonight, but I'm going to ask you this question and put you on the spot a little bit. Our question is, is there life on other planets? Yes or no, Professor? Yes, but we have no evidence for any life forms on the planet Earth. And intelligent life, we're still debating whether we have any on the Earth. <laughs> But do you really believe there's life on other planets? I think they're out there because our galaxy alone has 100 billion stars. And we know that about a billion of them are Earth-like. 
And so that is an enormous number Little of green platforms by which we can get light. Running around like the movies. Well, Will they be like us. <laughs> maybe not like us. Okay, on on TV we have actors that look just like us because I'm sure the Screen Actors Guild contract says you have to have human <laughs> actors play the aliens on all these programs. So more to come. Thanks for coming on tonight, Professor. Fascinating conversation. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. All right, now we want to know what you think. Here's our question tonight. As I mentioned, do you think there's life on another planet?